Alright, resuming the tutorial again. This is part two. Um, again, I'm just I'm just still working at this area here, trying to uh, clear it out. You'll notice that it's uh, the integrity of this area is just taking a major beating now. Um, but that's okay. I mean, you can only do so much with regards to these weird designs here to try and remove it. You'll notice here in the pants, it just sort of went to hell, I guess. But you see some of the creases here on this side. I'm going to try and take advantage of them. And, um, you know, just really just try to generate some texture here whenever I can. Might not look very good from this vi uh, distance here, but when you zoom out, you know, it won't be too noticeable. Alright, I'm going to continue working on the top part here. Again, if you feel like the brush is acting is working a little harder than it should, definitely change the hardness option. Make it smaller. Um, what I always find very funny is when I'm working on these tutorials, is when I run through it the first time, I usually do a pretty good job, but when I'm under the pressure of recording it, uh, things tend to go kind of crazy. So, so now we're just sort of totally deteriorating the quality of this, but that's okay. The idea is to sort of create the illusion of what it really isn't there, folks. So, something to learn. And again, practice and if you work at this and you're very diligent you can definitely do a much better job than I'm doing right now while under pressure so I'm very sure that all of you can take your time as I am just speeding through this as quickly as possible okay I'm gonna zoom out and see how this looks probably looks like crap Okay, so I have these two people now, Ron and um, Harry Potter and Hermione. So what I want to do is use our friend here, another wizard, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. And I'm going to take this link here, I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to put this as the backdrop. So. Something I, I showed in the past tutorial, use the selection tool. But first, let's unlock this. Always make sure to unlock your layers. It's such a nuisance. All right, highlight this section here. Edit, copy. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret, something very useful, just something for you to remember. For I guess for Windows computers, it's Control Plus. But whatever the equivalent is to the Mac, whether it's that weird Apple button or something like that, uh, if you click Control D, it deselects things, which is very useful. So now I want to import that layer here. So I'm going to go here, click New Layer, right? This layer three, and I'm going to click Edit, Paste. All right. So I'm going to move that layer down with that down arrow tool, so I can bring up Ron here. And now you can see that these characters have sort of taken a life in this backdrop here. All right. So I'm going to move. I'm going to go to my layer 3, which I'll call Lord of the Rings, L-O-T-R. And I'm going to click in that layer and move it around to a better position where I can see Gandalf. Alright. So now we have four wizards. Or unless you want to call Hermione a witch. Uh, we have four wizards now, all in one image. And all you had to do was utilize a tool which is the erase tool with some sort of softening in it, feathering I would, I guess you would call it, to sort of 
erase this. We use the the add uh, mask layer tool to isolate the images, then work on them separately. Uh, and now you have your backdrop here, just like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know it seemed kind of lame, kind of cheesy using these wizards. Um, I really actually wanted to use the wand tool for this somehow. But actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to show you one other thing here before we end. You see how we have all these layers here? Now, I don't want this last layer anymore. I'm going to delete this. So, at this point, I want to... What is this layer here? It's nothing. Delete that. What I want to do right now is I want to mash all these images into one layer. And you do that by flattening the image. So once you've done that, it's combined all the images, and you can no longer move um, an individual character on its own. And you might think, that's an idiot idea. Why would you do that? And you probably don't want to do that. But that's if something that you want to do, um, it might be very helpful. So I'm going to look at the wand tool now, because I have a bunch of wizards here, and they all use wands. And what is the magic wand tool? Well, the magic wand tool is a is a device that allows you to sort of capture a certain area. For example, let's say I want to try and capture this uh, dark color here, right? And we're like, whoa, what's going on here? Control D for deselect. The magic wand tool has a tolerance, and a tolerance means, so to speak, well, let me show you at a five tolerance. I'm going to click on this part of his shirt, and you'll notice it takes these patches here, right? If I change the tolerance to, let's say, 28 or so, and I click on that same patch, more of it gets selected. The tolerance is essentially saying, I'm trying to capture a particular color, but if you increase the tolerance, I can take more spectrums of this color, for instance, black to, to gray, or, or black to white, whatever that spectrum is, I'll try and pick it up. But the more tolerance you produce, the more colors I'll pick up. Now I'll click on um, Ron's coat here, deselect real quick, then try it again. Now it takes more of this, the area. Now it's even taking these orange areas here and, and the faces of everybody else here, which you don't want. So something for you to think about when you're actually using this uh, um, this tool. So you want to keep the tolerance really low and and select a certain area. right? So control D to deselect. Again, a very important tool when you're working and you, and you see these weird things pop up and you can't get rid of it because um, it's not simple to. I mean, you can't click away all the time. So deselect, Control D to remove it. Now, my let's see. Let's try to focus on just one thing real quick with all the time that I have left. Um, let's see. This actually isn't the best application for this tool, but uh, let's see if we can if we can pick up this red area here of Ron's um, coat. So I'm going to reduce the tolerance here to about five and click on this tool. You'll notice it picks up this red fairly consistently, right? And um, make it 10, picks a little bit more, right? I can actually, I think, <laughs> I haven't even tested this at all, I can change the color of that section there, right? I'll click on that, change the color, make it blue or something like that, and just click, right? And then Control D to deselect. And this tool essentially just paint in these sections of color. And you might be wondering, well, that doesn't look all that interesting at all. And it doesn't, to be honest. But you can kind of see the small application of the magic wand tool. And I am very positive this isn't all that you can do with it, obviously. There's, there's just way too many complex colors in this image to utilize this tool from my perspective. So I highly recommend that you explore and use a tool on much simpler colors um, and, and simpler images. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I know it was a lengthy two-part series, but I hope you guys have a better idea of how to use all the different uh, tools that are available in Pixlr uh, to really learn and explore image editing. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, just drop them all on the YouTube, and uh, I'll try and get back to you. All right, enjoy.